Welcome to Nature Inspired. In this podcast, we talk about creating a sustainable and thriving world, whether that be sustainability in environment, health, or relationships. We explore the connection between our individual health and that of the earth and learn how we can support the optimal functioning of both. My name is Tanya Vaitashik and I'm your host. Today, I get to speak with a native Hawaiian healer who uses the guidance of his ancestors to help people release themselves from the clutches of their chattering minds so they can learn to live in a less stressful way while gaining clarity, ultimately having more energy to serve their clients, show up more fully in their businesses or careers, and improve relationships in all facets of their lives. Welcome, James Kawainui. Well, thanks for having me, Tanya. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely to have you here. Thanks for being here. Stress can impact our health in pretty big ways. So it's one of the things that you work with people on. And before we dive in, I kind of just wanted to hear from you about your journey and see like, how did you come to do this work? What was, what was your path? Would you be willing to share about that a little bit? I, most certainly. Um, I haven't done this work all my life. It was something that I came to um, later on. So I've been doing this work for about 25 years, depending on who you ask. <laughs> and um, 25 years ago, I was a corporate executive and I worked in a very large company. I had lots of responsibilities. Um, there were, I had three departments of people that were I was in charge of. Um, I answered directly to the president of the company. And it was the job that I thought that I wanted. You know, I had worked for 17 years in this company to get to this point in this, in this, um, to get to this, I guess you would say the pinnacle. Mm. And when I took this position, the, the executives or the, uh, my bosses on the corp, on the, on the corporate um, level, the high, I guess, what would you call them, the headquarter level um, said, do this work, do a good job. And we have, a job for you at the corporate level or at the headquarters um, and being a teacher, which is really what I wanted to do was I wanted to teach on a corporate level. And because we had nine, we had nine plants and almost 8,000 people. And so I wanted to be able to touch people by, by sharing what I knew and had and in that way. And so I took the job and I worked at it for two years and I, and I worked really hard and I was very successful but I also got really burnt out. Mm. And so we were talking about stress yes. and, you know, I worked 60 hour weeks and I worked on Saturdays and, and didn't see my family very much and traveled a lot. And from the outside, it looked great. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, corporate jets, expensive dinners, you know, going places and, you know, expense accounts and everything else like that. But I was miserable and I didn't realize it. I just kept thinking, if I try harder, I'm going to get better. If I try harder, I'm going to get better. And I had um, a, um, something happen to me one night. And the um, easiest way for me to explain it is I got a tap in the back of the head and a voice that said it was time to go home. And the message was so abrupt. And it was the first time that I'd ever had a clairaudient experience. So I literally heard the voice. I literally held, heard, felt that the tap in the back of the head. And I walked into my boss's office the next day and I quit my job. Wow. And, and immediate and action, immediate action. I mean, that's how abrupt it was. It was like, I had never had anything like that happen to me before. And it was so abrupt and, and, and it was right in alignment because I was sitting there thinking, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. And so it's almost as if the universe kind of opened and said, Oh, finally, he's ready. Let's mm -hmm. talk to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that happened and I and I walked in the next day and I was 42 years old and I said, I can't do this anymore. And I quit my job. I sold everything that I had and I moved back to Hawaii. And, and the way that I tell the story is, and which has actually happened, is I lived for four and a half years in a shack with no electricity and no running water. So I went from this from this very high flying life mm -hmm. to really not having anything. Mm -hmm. And in the process of that four and a half years, I, I either blew or gave away everything that I had. And it was, it was this, it was this letting go of all these pieces. I didn't realize it, but what I was trying to do was figure out how to let go of the stress. But what I was doing was letting go of everything because that's where we start, right? When we're mm -hmm. going through transformational processes, we, we actually start on a physical level, you know? 
I don't like my home life. And some people may connect to this. I don't like my home life. So guess what I did? I moved all the way across the United States from Hawaii to Florida. Mm -hmm. And because we want to create distance, because we don't know how to create boundaries, we create the geographical boundaries. So my, the physical act of giving everything away. Yet there was all this unprocessed stuff that was inside of me. And, you know, and that's what the journey for the last 25 years has been, is that process of of understanding all these things that I've been holding on to the stresses and the traumas and, and the patterns and the behaviors of that, you know, that I carried, not only did I create, but I, I inherited from my parents who inherited from their parents who inherited from their parents. Mm -hmm. And so in this journey, I've come to understand that part, you know, because a lot of, a lot of times the stresses and, and the trauma that we have, are generational as well and so you know we may not go into that but you know that's been the journey and so the more i understood this the more i realized i carry a lineage of people that have been working as healers for many generations and so part of that journey is understanding that and being able to come into a place of being able to own it mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big part of it, I would imagine, is the being able to own it, right? Like, Because I would imagine that's a journey in and of itself. It is. That, yeah. you know, just being able to stand up. And it's funny because when my wife first met me, she kept saying, I see this big eight foot tall Hawaiian man behind you. You know, she could feel the essence of that. And, and I guess in the last maybe year and a half or so, I've had maybe a half a dozen or eight people come up and say, I see you, but I see this chief behind you. And, and, the, and the understanding of that is that it's time for me to step into that role of being that person, right? And, and I think all of us come to this point in our lives of having to, you know, wanting or being ready to step into this role of leadership or of personal transformation mm -hmm. and, and taking responsibility and owning that mm, yes yeah beautifully said yeah so so in the process you're now uh writing a book about ho'oponopono and your understanding of that and how it is different from the messaging that we receive a lot out in, in on different platforms of what ho'oponopono is and i would love to hear more about that how you how you came to understand that different meaning and yeah what can you share about that and what does it mean in your in your after you've done all your research and what can you share you about know, that in the last maybe i would say last five to seven years as i got more comfortable doing what i was doing i mean i've been i've been working with people for a really long time but the more public i became and the more i started teaching classes and you know we're doing retreats and and just talking about things people would walk up to me after class and you know for whatever classes that you know or, or talk i was giving and they would say do you know about ho'oponopono and i'd say yes and and you know everybody has an idea of that because it's been ho'oponopono basically has been mainstreamed over the last 30 years and and i would say yeah i know and so they stay they i people started asking me more and more to talk about that you know and what people know about Ho'oponopono, you know, is, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's for, for lack of a better way of saying it, it's a mantra that's been shared for many years now. And that's become mainstream and in some ways become the truth of it. And the more I thought about it, I mean, I even signed up to get my certification in Ho'oponopono and everything else. And I was on my way to doing all of that. And, and yet there was this place in the back of my mind that kind of kept going, something's not right. Something's not right. Something's not right here. And I started remembering the, the old Hawaiian teachers, masters that I, that I had the opportunity to sit with when I started on this journey. And there've been quite a few of them. And I remember what they talked about. And then I started hearing what my ancestors were talking to me about. And I, and I started looking at all of that and, and realizing that what I felt inside of me 
was way different than what that mantra meant or felt. And so I started looking and I started doing a little bit of research, not a lot, but just sitting inside of that and coming in and the messages that came. What I did find out when I went to look and when I went to research is that in the Hawaiian dictionary, okay, just to start there, when you look up ho'oponopono, It, there's two words in there and the and the two words are too correct so from our from the cultural standpoint ho'oponopono is not about forgiveness at all it's about correcting a wrong it's about righting a wrong it's about coming to terms the one of the root words inside of ho'oponopono is pono and when you look up pono pono means righteous goodness it means being living a righteous life Mm -hmm. so pono actually means how i live my life am i living my life in a way that's in integrity and not integrity with the world outside but in integrity inside of myself mm. so but out of about, that out of that comes integrity in the world doesn't it like when i'm in is. with myself then i treat the world and the environment around me in a better way wow there's another piece to that right mm -hmm. as well how can I respect, if we're talking about the environment, right? Just for example, how can I have any respect for the environment if I don't have any respect for myself, mm -hmm. yes. right? I don't, I don't have any respect for myself. I don't have any respect for the things that I have or the people in my life. How can I even be, begin to respect something that, for all intents and purposes, for most people, is an in, is inanimate, which is nature, right? Mm -hmm. So ho'oponopono means to correct, to correct an action, to correct a way of life, and and the process of ho'oponopono is not about forgiveness at all. It's actually about resolving conflict. Mm -hmm. So in in Hawaiian culture, ho'oponopono is about is about resolving conflict between two people between a group of people between families and so and there were very specific protocols that people went through one was was the um, bringing in a mediator bringing in a third party a third non-judgmental party that wasn't for one side or the other, but whose job was to hold space for everyone inside the process. And so there would be a conflict or there would be unresolved, something that was unresolved between two people and it could go on for months or it could go on for years to the point where it's not only affecting them, but it may be affecting people and other things around them. And so there's a place of coming together and, and one, you know, a lot of times it's, it's one person stopping and looking at this. And, and, and I know that people have had this experience in your life. I don't want to do this this way anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. And realizing that, can we find a solution to what's going on? And so they would, they, the parties would come together. They would agree to the Ho'oponopono process you know, a mediator would be assigned to the process. Mm -hmm. And then before even they came together to talk about what, what their gripe or their grieve grievances were, there would be, there would be cleansing, there would be meditation, there would be prayer inside of that, you know, because, because Ho'oponopono is a very sacred process. Mm -hmm. It's not entered into lightly because once you go into the process, you don't stop till it's done. There's no like quitting halfway through <laughs> because a mediator wouldn't let that happen, right? Mm -hmm. That person that was assigned to, to um, oversee the process. And so there was lots of introspection. And, and really when we're looking at our lives, our lives change, your life changes when you realize that it's not what's happening out here and me constantly reacting to those things, but actually coming to the point of going, well, wait a minute, mm -hmm. how am I impacting what's going on? Mm -hmm. 
And when we talk about the environment, that's a place where most people don't look because they were not looking at our personal impact. We're just kind of looking at in general. Mm, so true. Right? Yep. What's been happening. Yeah. So, so go ahead. And you wanted, you wanted to say something. Yeah, uh, no, it's such that's such important practice, right? The the ability and the knowing how to look inside, and how helpful that can be in in all of our relationships and and how we interact with with others and in and, and the environment, how we live our lives. It's so important, and so to have that built into a process, yeah, is beautiful, and yeah, sounds sounds like very sacred space and deep work that can happen in that way. I had a a, um, teacher once say it makes two to make stew. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's never just the one person. It's Mm -hmm. always a combination of everything that's happening, right? And so the parties would come together. The mediator's job was to allow everyone to have a say. Mm -hmm. That was the most important part of, you know, one of the most important parts of of the whole Ponopono process is I get to say how I'm feeling why I'm feeling the way that I do. And the key inside of that is nobody else talks. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how triggered you get. It doesn't matter what, if you think that they're wrong, you don't get to say anything. Part of the process is learning to listen. And I look at that all the time and I look, gosh, how do we actually listen to everybody in the world today? We have, you know, we have such, everybody has a POV, right? And, and we are really quick to want to express our POV, you know, our point of view to everyone. And yet, do we spend enough time listening to where other people are at? Or are we just too busy telling people where we are, right? Mm-hmm. That and is that- <laughs> such a good point. Yeah. And, and, you know, I happen to live in a community where the practice is to listen and to give everybody space in in all of our meetings so we have that built into our process and and how we interact with each other and the importance of that and the impact of that I just can't stress enough how incredibly helpful it is to know going into a space this will be a circle where I can be heard and there will be a time and place for me to speak up and all the other times is a time and place for me to listen and listen yeah and it's it's a huge piece in the process right makes such a difference and in so, our interaction yeah and so who knows how long it takes for you know if there's more than two people inside of this grievance everybody has a chance to speak so that we can hear where other people are and then they and then they would go their own ways because now that i understand or hopefully understand because i've been listening to what the other person says I may have a better understanding now of what the situation is. I have a better understanding of where people are inside of that, not just where I am, but where other people are. And so then we would go, they would go their separate ways for however long it took. And they would sit inside a contemplation. There would be prayer. There would be meditation. There would be looking at all these pieces because inside of that process is this constant place of looking at going, who am I and what am I or, and how am I contributing to this? What are the things that I've said or may have said or may have acted in a way that created this response, this reaction from other people? And so as many times as it needs, people would come back and we would sit and they would sit and, and come, to, come to a place of re- resolution. Sometimes it could take months. Mm. But, the, but there was still this dedication to that process and wanting to find that solution, right? And it may be concession. It may be having to look at ourselves and come to terms with some place inside of us. You know, ever had a disagreement where you walk into a room and you, in some ways you get blindsided by somebody because they're they're already in an emotional state and and their energy just kind of hits you, right? Like a train sometimes. Mm-hmm. And, and you get caught unawares, our immediate reaction or almost immediate reaction is going to be one of two things. I'm either going to run away or I'm mm-hmm. going to stand there and I'm going to fight you, mm-hmm. right? Because the survival instinct kicks in. And so once that happens, anger, this is one of the things that I've learned. Anger needs anger in order, in order to live, in order to survive. 
And when I can look at somebody or I can be in this place where I can feel the anger off of someone, but I choose not to take it on, but I can see and I may be able to see why they're angry and the things that have happened behind. Because, you know, they could be angry in that moment. They could have lashed out to you, but you didn't know, like, if they got caught off in traffic or they got into an accident or had a flat tire or their boss yelled at them at work or whatever else happened during mm -hmm. the course of the day. That And you just happened to be in front of them when all of that kind of just blew up right yes but if i'm not stopping long enough to listen to that then how do i know right and so back together over and over again so that they can come to this place and and there's this there's this idea that i have is being able to walk in somebody else's shoes so that i can see what their life is mm -hmm. so that i can see from their point of view the impact that i have made may have made right the process is only complete inside of Ho'oponopono when both parties agree that they've, they've hit resolution, that whatever conflict that they've been in has been resolved. Yeah, well, well, that can take a while, depending on what it is, right? It can, yeah, because, you know, we're looking at that, you know, yeah, we're, I'm looking at my ego and needing to be right and, and all the, all the pieces that go inside. But there's a process inside. When I talk about a whole ponopono, there's a process that I walk people through. And in that moment, as you know, because the, 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 the space between having emotions or being angry or whatever it is and having this, um, issues with someone and being able to forgive them if you want to or resolve, right? For most people, it's way too wide and we have too much emotional baggage or too much emotion attached to the situation to be able to j make that jump. I mean, you know, it's kind of like Eva Knievel trying to get across the, the, Grand, the Grand Canyon, not going to happen because the it's too wide a space, right? And so can I come first into just acknowledging that this is where people are? It's a powerful place. It doesn't mean I have to agree with them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm going to change my, my point of view or how I feel. And at the same time, though, can I acknowledge that that's where they are in their life? Mm -hmm. Right? It's, a, it's, it's being non-judgmental, really. Yes. And just, and inside of that place of acknowledgement, then can I come to acceptance? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like Byron Katie speaks about this, like accepting what is, right? Like really, truly embracing what is and then going from there. That's a piece God, I think yeah. that's so easy to skip. Yeah, it is an easy place to skip because my job is not to change them or try and change their mind. Yet if I can come to a place inside of that where I see and I can accept them for where they are, this is the way that I see this and this is what I feel. I'm looking past the personality and I'm looking at the human though. Yeah. Because it's a personality that carries all that the angst or carries all of that emotion and the human being, the soul, even the soul, I, I look to the soul because every, every person that's here, every, every human being, there's a soul and that soul is, is unconditional love. That mm -hmm. soul is that light that we understand and we talk about, right? And so can I see that person or that part of that person? Mm. And, and for me, it changes because then I go, oh, they're just doing the best that they can. They're just moving through life, trying to do everything that they're doing. And they have their fears and they have all these pieces that, that they're going through. Can I at least understand that? Can I accept that? Mm -hmm. No, I don't have to change anything. Know that there hasn't doesn't have to be any judgment. And, and and I'm asking for the same thing in return, right? Takes two to make stew, which means that we both have to come into that place or the, to be able to come into that place then gives us the platform to resolve all of that. Mm -hmm. In Ho'oponopono, the resolution is so complete that whatever the situation is, it is, it is agreed that they, it is never talked about again. So how many arguments have you had where you talk to somebody and, and it's resolved and then six months later they're talking to you and I say, why well, you remember the time that and, <laughs> and it pops back up again and say, wait yes. a minute, I thought we had gone past that. I'd, well, no, I'm not. I'm still, you know, 
Mm-hmm. And and we do that because we we carry, you know, we hold all those memories really tight and and because we remember all those pains and those places that we've been hurt and we have a hard time letting them go so we carry them everywhere with us and then when when the time comes open it's almost like we put, open a backpack and we start pulling them all out so that i can go through it again yeah right so that i can feel all these feelings again so i can blame these people again you know yeah and Part of this process of whole pono bono is being able to let go of those pieces and look at that and going, that happened in my past. I can continue to let it bother me and keep bringing it in front of me so I can look at it again and just go, wait a minute, that there was a moment in time where this thing happened because of all of these factors. It doesn't mean that all of these factors are present now Mm -hmm. unless i or the person that i'm in conflict with brings it back up again thing about it is is when something happens it's rare that it it changes you know they say the past is the past what happened has happened right our opportunity to look at that and go wait a minute I don't know if I want to do that this way again. Mm -hmm. Can we find a different way of doing this? Right? That's when we start to move forward. That's when we start to look at this because we go, I don't want to do this. And and sometimes it takes one person saying that, getting to that place and looking at it and going, gosh, I I don't want to do this with you. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't want to continue to use my vital life force that I have so much of on this thing Mm -hmm. because I got all these other things that I want to do. Yes. Yes. Well, (laughs) and to even get to that understanding is, is sort of a path as well to even get to that place of, of understanding, Oh, I keep doing the same thing and I keep having the same result. And sometimes it takes us a minute to get there and to see that. And we keep repeating and repeating until the pain, I guess, becomes too great or something happens that makes us question for a moment. That, that, and that's the piece about patterns and behaviors, because now we're talking about patterns, and behaviors, and there's a whole science to that. And, and I don't think that this is a conversation or we don't have time to talk about all of that today. So we'll just kind of let that go. But you're right, because that repeating situation shows up in our lives again. And then, you know, you get into a relationship with people and I go, how come I pick the same person that I did the last time? Or why do I find the same kind of jobs or I have the same kind of boss that I had, you know, before? And what is it about that? And we keep looking at that going, well, these people are. And as soon as I say these people are, what I'm doing is not taking responsibility for where I've been inside of, you know, my part inside Mm -hmm. of that. Now, I'm not saying that Ho'oponopono can't be about forgiveness, but it doesn't start out being about that. It can be the result of after looking at all the different pieces, right? So in some ways I can see why it got, I don't know how to say it, adapted. That's the that's nicest way I could say it, adapted to talking about forgiveness. But that's not the original intent. The original intent is to b- become pono, to become right inside yourself again. Mm-hmm. And the more I come into that right action, right place inside me, I had this, actually, I had one of my clients say this the other day. She went, she said, I'm going to work and people aren't angry at me anymore. I don't see angry people anymore. I said, really? And I said, why? And she said, well, I'm thinking because I'm not angry. Mm -hmm. And I said, good for you. Because what she was realizing was as she was changing inside, the situations and the interactions that she was having were were changing as well. Mm -hmm. People Mm -hmm. didn't feel as defensive because she wasn't angry. So they weren't defensive back. Mm -hmm. Imagine how that happens. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's beautiful. Yes. And so powerful because it can, it can take away so much. You said it earlier, I think so much of our life force and our energy to just kind of be in these places and to be able to just cut through all that. And 
do what we want to do, uh, work on what we came here to work on, right? And and be able to live the lives that we want to live. How right. amazing. And reduce stress in the meantime as well. Like, how amazing is that? <laughs> and a full circle back to the stress, because, you know, the reality is that most of the stress that we create in our lives, we create, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And being able to look at that. And and stress, I think, is a really important factor to look at nowadays because they because there's there's multiple studies that says that stress is in some ways the number one factor for disease and illness. Mm -hmm. That energy that we carry that's breaking down our bodies through the cortisol and the adrenaline that we're constantly running is actually tearing down the cellular structure of our body, which is let, let's just put it this way. Anger is shortening your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pure and simple. Stress is shortening your life. Pure and simple. And so the more we can work on understanding the stressors in our lives, understanding the process that I can use to reduce those stressors and being conscious of wanting to live in a way where I'm not constantly carrying those emotions, especially those negative emotions around with me. Yeah, you're going to live longer. <laughs> and and likely healthier as well in the process. I've read a lot of things about how stress impacts the health and, and like the symptoms we can have along the way. So it may shorten our lives, but it also makes it a little bit harder to live with whatever symptoms might manifest for any one of us. Yeah, that, that, that energy in the breaking down, it opens the body up and literally opens the mind up to illness and disease. And, and if I'm really stressed and I'm not paying attention and I don't see the car stop in front of me and then all of a sudden I hit the car and I get hurt, right? So those, those are how those chain events or those domino effect is about where stress is inside of us, mm -hmm. right? That, that I, I use that analogy often. I said, how many of you drive home to work and don't realize it and you're in the, and you're in your driveway and there's a, and there's sometimes there's a part that goes, wow, how did I get home? I'm here. You know, most of us don't even get that. We just get home and we get out of the car, you know, so mm -hmm. it's that awareness. So that piece about stress, that piece about being present, that piece about breaking, breaking down those patterns. Yeah. What does that look like? Like, can you share with us an example or a, the way you work through that with folks? You guys really want to know what the easiest thing to do when you're in that position is? <laughs> yes, of course. Breathe. Breathe. You you know that, and and I think a lot of people do, but that's what really what we're talking about. When we get to that place, when we're caught inside of our emotions. We are not in the present moment. And people are talking about the present moment in, in lots of different ways right now. But re the reality is, and that's just like driving out, getting into your driveway and not realizing you get home because you're not present because your mind is somewhere else, yep. right? And so if our minds are somewhere else and we're fixated on whatever that emotion or that feeling that, that is, the mind is an amazing thing because it doesn't matter if it's the first time or the millionth time that I felt that energy, the mind is going to react and the body is going to react in the very same way, like it's the first time. And so the body gets habituated into acting and reacting that way over and over and over until it keeps us there. And so realizing that that's happening right so one is awareness awareness that it's actually happening awareness that i'm not in my present moment you know and how much does it take to take to stop and go wait a minute i want to stop this in this moment i don't want to keep doing that i'm just going to take a breath and you take a breath 15 20 seconds but you're not thinking about all these other things when you're doing that you're not thinking about all of that what you're doing is you're taking a breath and actually being conscious of breathing I feel the air going inside me. I feel the air going past my nose and down the back of my throat. I feel the air expanding and contracting in my body. Oh, I have a body. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> How about that? Exactly. Oh, 
I'm breathing and I'm realizing that I have a body. I'm having a, I have a body and I'm, I'm sitting in this chair and oh, I'm in this room and I'm talking to somebody on, on Zoom, right? And all of a sudden we're back inside of this place. And what that does is it interrupts that train of energy for whatever that emotion and that thought that we were having. And really that's what we're talking about doing. We're talking about interrupting that, that, that train or that momentum of energy from that thought or whatever we're feeling or, or thinking about mm -hmm. long enough so that I can come back and go, oh yeah, I'm, I'm James, <laughs> I'm here, right? That we, that we get, we forget. And, and there's lots of other things that you can do. And yet to start with is that, can I interrupt that thought? Mm -hmm. I mean, we could talk about lots of different things about listening to the words that you use and the negative, the negative way that I describe myself in my world. And oh my gosh, all those other things too we mm -hmm. can talk about. But the, the, the point is, you know, you ask for how can we do this? And that's a start. Yeah. Yeah, breath is so important because I, I don't know, but I definitely notice that when I have those moments, when I have a reaction of some sort, my breath pretty much is non-existent or very, very shallow. And so well, that's a really interesting thing that you should say that, because when I start talking to people and we start talking about breath and I and I talk to them about that. I would say eight times out of 10, they'll come back to me and they went, oh, my God, I am so shocked. And I say, why are you shocked? They said, because every time I stopped, I realized I wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. And if you realize how much you held your breath mm -hmm. and the connection between holding your breath and stress and adrenaline and, and everything else that's connected to that, right? If you realize how much you held your breath, you would change. It would change. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a good awareness to just kind of stop maybe. And when I was, when I first started doing this, I swear it was sometimes it was 18 or 20 or 30 times a day where I had to catch myself and go, wait a minute, James, you're over here. Come back here. You're over here. Come back here. Right. And, and it's a, it's a dedication and a commitment because it's, it is work. Mm -hmm. It definitely is work. That, and I, it's something else I'm just going to throw out there. Most people don't want to do the work. You, we just want, we are a one pill fix everything society. And unfortunately, this is not one of those places in your life that you're going to be able to do this. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's an important point is I think we've been so conditioned with, uh, with how we live our lives nowadays that quick fix, quick, exactly the quick fix of whatever situation we're in, it's like, or the walking away, like, oh, this is just really not working. This person is just whatever they are, whatever we, I project onto them. And then I'm just going to walk away because this is not workable. And it's walking away doesn't resolve anything though, because the energy is still there mm -hmm. and you're still carrying it. Walking away just takes whatever is happening and, and sticking it in a closet and not looking at it again. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while you open the closet, all those things fall out and kind of go, oh no, nah, I don't want to look back in the closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The healthier thing is to look and to embrace and be with. Yeah. And and it's and it's going to be uncomfortable. And so it's it's understanding that and knowing that up front that it's going to be because it was uncomfortable when you put it in the closet. It's going to be uncomfortable when it comes out, mm. right? And and that's one of the places sometimes when having somebody else there with you can be so powerful. And that's where having somebody that's not attached to the emotion, somebody that can sit and be neutral mm -hmm. that can help you walk through this right and so finding we all think that we can fix everything ourselves and we can't believe me i tried that most of my life yep <laughs> and and so reaching out and saying i think i need help or i'd like help with this mm -hmm. that's a huge first step to get yes. to that point there's and no different than there's no different than an addict saying i'm an addict 
I have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a powerful one. And it's one that gets you support and gets you help getting through whatever the situation might be. And that's where you come in. That's how you... I come in or, or another practitioner or, you know, if people look and they, you know, and they want to go to therapy or, or whatever it is, or a trusted friend or someone in your family that, you know, that is going to hold that space for you, you know? So yeah, however that looks. Yeah. And if it's, and if it's um, a healing practitioner or an energy practitioner who can look inside and see the energy, talk you through those places, you know, when I'm working with someone, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at how the energy is moving through their bodies. I'm looking at where the energy is caught. I'm looking at when I can feel them contracting because they're afraid or they don't want to be seen. And, and literally, when you feel that way, energetically, you're like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And helping people recognize that feeling in their body and have the experience of it. Because instead of keep continuously running away from it, which is what we spend most of our lives doing. Mm, so true. Yeah. And I would imagine that gives a lot of choice in that moment when we do that, when we slow down enough and we're able to be with and slow down enough to choose what our reaction or response or action is in, in response to whatever is happening. We don't realize how much control we do have in our lives. And we don't realize that we are making choices constantly, but we're not taking responsibility for the choices that we make. So when we start looking at that and we start taking responsibility and going, oh, this is happening because I said or did this, or I was too afraid to do this. And mm -hmm. now I'm in this place, right? that control or that level of awareness helps us to look at things and go, okay, so I don't want to do this this way. What can I do differently? And, and you were asking that question all the time. We may not know the answer in that moment, but at least it's opening the door for other possibilities. Yes. Yes. And I love what you said. It's about choice, right? About the choices that we make. Yes, choice and freedom in that as well. People talk about see people talk about free will. Free will is making those choices and taking responsibility for them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yes, one cannot go without the other. Yes, that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, what is one thing if you weren't a people to take away just one thing from today what would be the most important point that you would like people to hold on to or to remember i would say if i had one thing to to share with people and and ask them to do or to maybe consider i would say practice being gentler with yourself mm -hmm. Practice being gentler with yourself. Start watching how you talk about yourself. Do your best not to drop straight into self-criticism or self-doubt when things are not going your way. And to see if you can come up with another word or another way of describing where you are. So, in, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about being kinder to other people. Let's just start by being kinder to ourselves yes i think if people can embrace that they may be really surprised at one what they're going to hear and two how quickly they'll realize what they've been doing to themselves and want to change that mm -hmm. yeah beautiful that, that, that would be my take that's my takeaway <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a wonderful and really helpful practice. Is there anything that you wish I had asked that I didn't ask that you would like to share? Anything you would like to share about before we, um, before we wrap? No, I think we covered a lot of ground today, and and to maybe to try and 
put something else inside of that would just, you know, it might be too much. I mean, that, there was a lot to unpack in this. So, you know, you may listen to it over and over again. There may just be pieces of it that you'll be able to take away. Um, give yourself permission to replay this as much as possible and, you know, and listen to the pieces. And I'm not saying you have to agree with everything that I say, and I hope you don't. Because it's that place where you question things that are happening that helps create and stimulate growth. Because now you're not just looking at it one way or the way that I said it, but you're looking at it in other possible ways as well. So, mm -hmm. And let your own guidance and your own wisdom emerge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here today, for sharing all these beautiful pieces of wisdom and practical steps as well, what we can do to improve our relationship with ourselves and with others and to reduce our stress levels and live a healthier lifestyle, a more sustainable lifestyle. And come into relationship, not with just with ourselves, but with the people and, and, the, and the environment around us. Because really, that's what we're talking about. The more I come into alignment with myself, the more I will come into alignment with the people and the situation and the places around me. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think that's I think that's really important. Agreed. Yes. Well, thank you for that addition. Thank you for being here today and taking the time to share with us all the beautiful pieces you've had to share today. I, I'm so grateful. I was grateful when I when we saw each other again for the first time in a long time. And you said, I'm doing this. And I said, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was very excited about that. And here we um, are. Me too. And here we are. So grateful to be here. Grateful to be with you again. It's been, it's been too long. And um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.